Think about it from your own perspective. What might you have in your house that you don't need? Here are some questions that may help you to determine ways to look at your house and your space. Here's a frightening question. Do you consider that you have all your possessions under control? When you see clutter in your house, whether it is in the public open areas of your home or whether it is stuffed awkwardly and perhaps guiltily into storage areas or hidden in places like an attic or a garage, how do you feel when you come across those items that you know you're not using, that you feel you're very unlikely to ever use and which you have an emotional connection to? How do you feel? How does, how does seeing those things make you feel? Your clutter is completely personal to you and how you feel about it, how you connect with it is very much an individual intrinsic sensation and a feeling. Tens of millions of people around the world will have clutter in their homes and they have no issue with it whatsoever. To be honest, so many of us are completely unconscious of the clutter in our lives that we don't give it a second thought because it doesn't register. When you start to think consciously about the items in your property and whether they should be there, all of a sudden you're putting a spotlight on what should I do about these items? But for those tens of millions of people, this book is irrelevant. I've confessed my issues and my addictions to clutter and to hoarding. How do you feel about the circumstances that you have allowed to happen as things build up and accumulate in your living space? The things we bring into our home should be here with us because they either make us happier or they bring ease or benefit to our lives. Where the possessions that you and I bring into our homes start to no longer have function or cease to bring benefit, at that point they are unconsciously causing us stress. If 20% of your house is unusable because of the clutter, you're working longer hours or you're chasing a different employment pattern, simply be able to bring those things into your home and continue to live in the other 80% of the available space. You'll push for a promotion because you want more money, but you'll be completely unconscious of the fact that actually 20% of your household outgoings are allocated to covering space that you cannot use, you cannot access, and which bring you no benefit whatsoever. Quite naturally, we need to look at the physical aspects of what we bring into our homes, how we store those things, whether we use them, how we might let go of them, having identified that they have no real value to us. But in addition to that, we have to look at the mental and the psychological issues of dealing with this clutter which sits in our home. We have to look at the toxic connection we have with filling aspects of our social life with people who bring no value, who are a drain on our energy. How about the distraction that comes from digital clutter? Things that are filling up your devices in the home, the electric energy of aspects of your constant connection to the world outside the house. And of course the overwhelm that can occupy your mind and your personal energy from realizing that you have too many things in your home environment. To answer the question of why do we gather so much clutter, we do it because we are human. We do it because to see things that we like and think, oh, I'd like that in my bedroom or in our kitchen or in our garden furniture collection, it's a completely natural thing. What we have to ask ourselves is why we do that. Does it make us feel happier to buy it? Do, do we feel safer having that within our control? Does the purchase of that item or those clothes allow us to feel good because we can say to ourselves, I can provide for my family, I can provide for my loved ones. And buying this item is just a part of that process. Often we will buy things on impulse because it will make us feel better in the short term 
And it might be a statement such as, I deserve this because I've gone through so much recently, that allows us to justify what we've just purchased. I recently used an example when talking about my book, Climbing Out of Debt, of somebody who made a bargain purchase. They saw a beautiful shirt in a shop window. They had some surplus available credit on their credit card. They didn't have money on their debit card account, so they didn't really have the money to afford it. But their argument was, oh, it's a real bargain. I'll look great if I wear it. I'm going to buy the item, take it home. I've added to my wardrobe, but I've also added to my debt. Often, be careful you don't get trapped by this. We think of something as being a bargain because the price or the ticket level has been reduced. So does that mean we have to buy it? Absolutely not, because you already have many of the items that are similar to or related to or quite like what you're buying at the bargain price. Don't fall for that one. You're bringing clutter into your house using an excuse that it was a bargain, so you had to buy it. Another one I heard when talking to somebody for putting the book together was, oh, we've struggled such a lot recently, so I figured we deserve this. How does that work? You haven't got the finances to buy an extra item, or you don't have the space to bring another item in to clutter up what is already a full wardrobe or a full rack of books on your shelf. But you bought another one because you've been having difficult times, so it was a treat for yourself. We clutter for all sorts of reasons. Like I've said, we clutter because we are human, and part of having stuff around us makes us feel safe, and it's as if our spending patterns sometimes give us a sense of justification for the work we go through, or as I've said in the other example, for the struggles that we've survived and gone through recently. Being human gives us a sense that we have to carve out our own identity in a world that is so often homogenized, identical, similar brands, different perspective, must have, latest trend, special item, but really very much the same. We think that by surrounding ourselves with the things which reflect we believe ourselves to be in the world, we will then create a space which feels unique to us. And when you first do this, starting to accumulate the things around you which make you feel good, it does seem like you are achieving the goal of originality in your home. But at what cost? Or, better said, at what price? <laughs>